Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Kappa AI podcast. Today, I'm super excited to have Ankush, co-founder of Langchain on, who, to be fair, needs no introduction in this uh, in this day and age. Uh, but I think there's so many exciting topics we can cover on Ankush, and especially I want to get to sort of Langchain JS in a bit. But I think before we start, uh, by, by way of introduction, um, would love to hear a little bit about your story and how you and Harrison ended uh, ended up teaming up for for Langchain. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, and thanks for uh, thanks for the introduction, Emil. And yeah, congrats on all the success you've had with Kappa. Um, yeah, I think it's a great product, and um, yeah, it seems like you're getting a lot of great feedback. So uh, yeah, I can give a quick introduction to myself. Um, yeah, I'm Ankush, yeah. co-founder of Langchain. I uh, um, I have like primarily like a software engineering backend background. Um, after college, I worked at Facebook for like four and a half years, primarily on like data infrastructure, mobile infrastructure, some ML infrastructure stuff. Um, and then I uh, worked at Robust Intelligence, uh, which is actually where I met Harrison. Um, and we worked together uh, very closely uh, um, there. And then I moved uh, on to another startup where I actually worked with uh, Harrison's brother, um, which is <laughs> which is a funny story. Uh, so I've worked with two out of three of the Chase brothers. Um, and yeah, it obviously had like a really fantastic experience working with Harrison. Um, and uh, actually the timing worked out really great because as he was, uh, uh, as he was, um, uh, starting to work on Langchain, um, I had you know left my job and was kind of thinking of next steps. And uh, he asked if I wanted to start hacking with him on Langchain, uh, and I and I did. And uh, yeah, sort of the rest is history. And this was like back in like early December. So yeah. Oh wow! So Pretty much time, right. Time is right from the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, he started the project uh, like end of October, so it was a little bit yeah. a little bit of time, but yeah, and things have been flying by ever since. Yeah. yeah, I mean, what's what's the journey been like just from more of a, a personal perspective? I mean, even just since back in December, right? I think a couple thousand stars in GitHub and now you guys are closing in on like 25,000, right? That's sort of very much the yeah. outside view, but but what's 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 that whirlwind been like for, for you personally? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Actually, like it was right around a thousand stars when I started working with Harrison. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, it's been like, it's, it's been yeah, <laughs> growing very quickly ever since. And I think, um, yeah, like, uh, we, we realized, um, uh, like how big of a role like open source will play. Um, right. And I don't think we saw like how big of opportunity is here is here just to like hone in on the open source project and like create like a really great, uh, easy to use um, system for creating applic uh, LLM applications. But that became more and more apparent um, as as things moved along. And, you know, we really want to be like the ubiquitous sort of system for building LLM applications. So, yeah, that's something that is like even grown beyond our uh, <laughs> our imagination. Um, so, yeah, that's been that's been really exciting. Like, I guess, like on a personal level. Um, yeah, it's just been uh you know it's it's been a very it's a very fast moving space and so um i think it's it's exciting that you get to like almost work on something new every single day uh you could have like a or sorry every single week maybe not every single day and you can have an idea for for an, and a plan for for what you want to uh sort of work on but a lot of it is governed by just the speed of uh, evolution, like, you know, the rate of evolution, like in the space. Uh, so that's, that's also been very interesting and, and, and exciting. No, it makes a ton of sense and question. And I don't know, maybe, maybe um, uh, sort of deep diving in that a little bit, because um, you, you do mention the speed. And I think that is probably one of the most shocking things when sort of looking outside in at, 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 at what you and Harrison and, and team are sort of building, right? It's just how fast you guys are moving. So, Maybe a question is a little bit around like how the heck do you manage uh, you know an open source project with just the number of contributions you guys are getting, like how much um, how much is sort of outside contribution, how much is you Harris and the team sitting down and 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 writing this code yourself and sort of shaping the direction of the contributors, um, what what does that average day look like for you guys right now? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, uh, yeah, 
Harrison and I are both like pretty technical, and so we still write a lot of the code along with you know the rest of the LangChain team. Um, so 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 we do a lot of coding. Obviously, like the open source community is amazing, and we're getting a ton of contributions every day. Uh, and the rate of contributions uh, is also increasing <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, so sometimes it's like really hard to keep up. And uh, yeah, it's a, it's so like we're able to move fast because you know we we like to execute fast, but also we're getting a lot of contributions from the open source community, which we're like super thankful about. Um, the uh, in terms of like how to. Uh, there's like sort of like a, a related question, which is like, how do we figure out like what to work on? Um, and this comes back to my point earlier, which is like, sometimes you, you have to pick a, a direction and sort of move in that direction, right? And so that's that's part of it. The other part of it is we get a lot of feedback from Discord and Twitter and GitHub. And so we kind of know like what uh, things we should prioritize next. Like what are, what are, uh, the things that a lot of people are, are asking for? Uh, the, the third one is more related to, um, I guess like the, the JS library, uh, which is, we kind of like have learned what has worked well in Python. And so, um, it's a little bit easier to prioritize what we need to do in JS because, uh, we want to bring it up to feature parity, uh, with Python. So, like that's a little bit more um, set in stone, but obviously, yeah, like things are things are evolving and things are moving very quickly. And so you just have to, um, you kind of have to like execute quickly and move along at the at the rate <laughs> that the space is moving it. <laughs> yeah, and, and kind of what, what a rate that's been, yeah, what a rate that is for the space. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Since, since you brought up, uh, uh, you know, LangChain JS, why why don't we um, why don't we spend a moment uh, spend a moment here? Um, yeah. I think just as of a couple of days ago, you just announced you know multiple uh, environments like Cloudflare Workers, Dino, Superbase, etc. There's a ton going on here. You said you're sort of racing to, to feature parity on on LangChain JS, but would love to hear a little bit more about sort of the um, the vision or sort of how you see LangChain JS and, and Python you know, working sort of side by side is the idea to just always sort of maintain feature parity. Do you see different use cases for, um, for you know, sort of how folks are interacting with, with each, uh, each SDK? Yeah, that's a really good question. And yeah, I just want to quickly shout out uh, Nuno, uh, Nuno yeah. Campos for all the amazing work he's done on maintaining the Langchain JS library, uh, like it being the primary maintainer there. And then, you know, also doing a lot of great work on uh, supporting multiple JavaScript environments. Like I was reviewing that PR, it's, it was a beast of a <laughs> PR. And uh, uh, yeah, so just like, yeah, big shout out to him. And uh, yeah, so so uh, in terms of where we see JS going, um, yeah, so we want to bring it up to feature parity with Python, that's important. Uh, we think that like, with JS and Python, we, we cover a lot of ground because a lot of the ML uh, community um, or application developer community, it's like, yeah. you know, familiar with, with Python and that's like sort of been the programming language that uh, ML engineers and uh, ML practitioners have been using uh, to, to build applications, right? Uh, and now, uh, but with JS, like what you really enable is like more full stack and front end developers to uh, work with uh, you know, generative AI technology. Um, and the, I mean, like the goal of LangChain is to make it really easy to, for, for, for application developers, like all sorts of developers to, uh, you know, build intelligence into their applications, right? Uh, and we want to provide the right abstractions for this. And so uh, with, with supporting like these two languages um, side by side, uh, we think we can cover a lot of ground. Uh, I think right now we're trying to keep them as, as close as possible. There might be some things that we need to do differently for each package, right? Like one thing is like, for example, like all the work that we've done on supporting multiple environments, like that's not really something you need to worry about <laughs> in Python, right? Um, uh, or as much in Python. Uh, but like in terms of use cases, we'll, we'll really see down the road. I think like I'm really curious to see 
um, especially now that we've supported like multiple JS environments, like how people will be building with JS and maybe there are some things that we need to do differently there. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's sort of a, I don't know if that directly answered your question, but those are some yeah, of my thoughts no, there. I think just, just super, um, super interesting to hear you kind of riff, uh, riff on this topic. And, um, and I really, I, I'm personally, I'm very excited to see, uh, see how LangChain JS evolves. And maybe to, to stay on that topic of sort of where things are moving, you know, it's, it's also an exciting time for LangChain as now officially a, a company as of the announcement, I guess, last week with, with, uh, with the seed realm. So congrats on that as well. Um, Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. No, it's a super, super exciting time, right? Because all of a sudden it's a transition, not only from, from technical questions, but also more sh shaping and building a, a company around LangChain, right? And, exactly. you know, I think you did a, a great job in the blog post, you, you Harrison and, and team, and sort of outlining the, the vision of where, where Langshane is heading in, in, in the future, but would love, and Kush, just to hear your, your thoughts as well. Um, sort of how, what does Langshane look like, you know, in, in a couple of months? Um, because I would imagine, like, moving further down that line is just too uncertain now, given, given the speed of exactly. development here in, yeah. in space. I yeah, I would say that even a couple of months, it's like, it's hard to tell exactly like where we'll be. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, we really, we really uh, want to grow out the open source community as, or the open source package and community as much as possible. Uh, we want to be ubiquitous. We want um, to be the place where developers start uh, and continue with building uh, LLM applications. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I think uh, we're, we're open to learning um, uh, like what some of the problems are with uh, building, you know, production grade like LLM applications and sort of thinking about, you know, what other things we can offer there. Um, that's not like super, uh, you know, well thought out yet, but, you know, it is it is really difficult to get these things working well uh, and reliably uh, in, in a production environment. And that's something that we have learned from also like building with this technology. And so, uh, yeah, I not super sure what that looks like yet, but that's like an active area of interest for us. Um, but yeah, like we obviously, you know, we raised because we want to allocate more resources to this project. <laughs> And yeah. there's so much, there's so many things that we could be doing. Um, I mean, you see the number of pull requests, the number of issues, like there's, there's so many people are asking us for, for things left and right on discord. And so, so we really want to scale up our resources, um, uh, on this project and, and, um, yeah, I think like that coupled with thinking about, you know, um, what are the blockers for, for running these types of systems in production or like, uh, areas that we're actively focused on. No, it makes a ton of sense. My two cents in this, by the way, as someone who's um, spending all day thinking about running these in production across a bunch of, a bunch of companies is evaluations. It's the, the most under, yeah. uh, underserved problems um, as you're iterating. There's a ton of cool like early projects out there, but I, you know, <laughs> take my money. Solve that problem, take my money. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Um, yeah, yeah, we've been hearing evals being being really important and really, really, uh, really big recently. So yeah, yeah, no, it's super cool, Coach. Um, maybe as a closing closing question, as you kind of brought it up as um, in, in your previous answer, uh, you know, the role of community. Uh, I think as GitHub has grown uh, like crazy in terms of stars, I think so has uh, so has this Discord community. And, there's so many people in there that are now building their own LLM apps for the first time and so on. I'm super curious to hear about how you guys think sort of the role of community and, and, and how you see that evolving now as, as, as sort of Langchain matures into, um, into our company over time here. Yeah, um, I think, yeah, community is, is, is extremely important because without the community, <laughs> uh, you know, Langchain <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't be where it is today. And uh, yeah, I mean, like, I think there are two key ways um, that we're, we, we, we hope to engage with the community. One is, you know, actually, actually a few. So, so we want to, we want to host a lot of like events and like meetups and like 
um, you know, uh, uh, like, you know, encourage people to build with, yeah. with Langchain and just make it as easy as possible to get started. Um, there are a lot of like awesome people in the community that are creating like YouTube videos and stuff to, uh, uh, I, I guess, like make this content like a bit more accessible. Um, so, you know, some people are, 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 uh, find it easier to follow like videos rather than like, uh, you know, more like technical documentation. Um, and like, we, we also want to encourage people to, uh, you know, join the discord and like give, give feedback there. We're always looking for feedback, uh, especially on like any new abstractions that we create and the community has been like, you know, really, um, really key part in, in, in figuring out the right abstractions, uh, both in the past and like moving forward. Um, and then, yeah, like community contributions are like also like really important and really big. Um, and so we want to basically make it as easy as possible, uh, to, um, you know, push code to, to Langchain, uh, and make it easy to like understand what's going on and like, uh, hopefully like get through the PRs in a timely manner, <laughs> which we're, we're still working on. So, yeah. Thanks. Does that kind of answer your question or were you looking yeah, for, I think, for something again, different? Again, similar to the, yeah. no, similar to the JS question. I think just super interested or super interesting to hear you guys are just thinking about community, right? And engaging that because when kind of zooming out and looking across the board, like across sort of open source projects, I think it's just one area among many where, where Langchain really excels, right? I mean, you have this crazy growth in the discord and, and people are really, really engaging with the project. So, um, yeah. Yeah. You guys are doing something. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. I think I think Harrison, especially, has done an amazing job of like uh, just establishing uh, like you know a Twitter presence early on, <laughs> right? Yeah. And uh, and like you know he's really great at just sharing what we're working on, giving out frequent updates. I think that's like super yeah. important. Um, and so yeah, big shout out to him for like yeah. uh, you know you know he's, he's great technically, but he's also sort of a, a great at like, you know, communicating and engaging with the open source community. So, yeah. That's awesome. No, shout out, shout out to everyone on the team there. Um, hey, I'm Chris, <laughs> this, is, this has been an absolute pleasure um, and, and a ton of fun. Um, I think we managed to cover a lot of ground in these, these 17 minutes as well. So uh, I just want yeah, to say likewise. thanks for, for finding the time to jump on and- uh, Of course. Uh, you know, Eddie, I, I would say you know you know where to find you guys. <laughs>